I'm not gonna lie, man, this sketches me out so much. I feel like we're gonna walk up on like a dead body or something. Man, it's just phone calls after phone calls after phone calls and nobody wants to call you back. Nobody home. Found us a big one. Oh no, it's all corn. I know they rotate their crops, but they've they've done soybeans back to back several times. Last year, this farm was corn or soybeans. I was hoping it was gonna be soybeans again. All right. Purpose of this episode is we are making our summer run. On the door knocking campaign starting here in Tennessee. We left Georgia late last night. Starting in Tennessee, going through Kentucky, Ohio, and then up to Michigan. And I, we're kind of giving a behind the scenes look of sort of what happened last year. A lot of this scouting and stuff is always left unsaid or just untold on our videos. We can only fit so much on a video. So this is a summertime episode, giving a behind the scenes look of that. But the big thing for this episode right now and this journey is I've got two to three deer on my radar that are giants. And when I say giants, like last year, one of them was probably 230, 40 inches or more. Uh, crazy, non-typical, just drop tines everywhere. So we're on a journey to find him. I had another buddy of mine who actually laid eyes on a huge deer. But the big thing in this episode that I genuinely need you guys help with is I've got a deer that I now have. This will be my third year of history with. I'm not going to say what state, but this deer has world record potential uh, with a bow for typical. He's huge. Um, and I'll explain the situation and kind of the backstory a little bit later in this video, but I'm gonna need you guys to chime in and give us feedback in the comments of whether or not I should hunt this deer. And I'll explain the scenario later, but um, we're on a farm. Uh, it's all planted in corn. We've hunted it in soybeans in the past. Uh, we've got a lot of history out here. We've never taken a deer. There's been some big ones out here and we're gonna get a camera set up here. Uh, we got one more spot or one more area in Tennessee that we want to check out. Uh, but then after that, we are hightailing it up north. Going to keep the show on the road and uh, launching a, uh, I guess, the first 2023 door knocking campaign kind of headed north. So. Let's get rolling. I'm doing a uh, mineral site. I normally bring a bag of something crushed up to sink into the dirt, but we're kind of limited on what we can carry. So I just brought a trophy rock and I'm putting some deer cane on top of it. That'll help soak into the ground. And then I'm gonna spread corn on the edges. There's good, a, a good river access point here. And another tip that I would give for anybody out there is whenever you're putting a camera out, mineral site, anything like that at all, don't just blindly put it out. Don't just kind of, oh, let's just put it here constantly be thinking of where you would set up to hunt that spot we've got a really good tree to get in right here we've got access off of the river um, so i just don't want to put this somewhere like where we couldn't even get in a tree stand i want to make sure that if the deer take to these minerals this summer that we got a tree stand or a tree that we can put a stand in all right first camera hung Let's go to the next one Man's got some fresh peaches. We gonna pick up some fresh peaches. These suckers are good, man. Someone tried to uh, rip my camera off the tree. What you know about a polywag? I'll tell you what. Someone leave a random comment who wants this polywag card and I will legitimately mail this to your house. That's a promise. Leave a comment if you want the polywag card. <laughs> That's gonna go right there this trip. All right, we just wrapped up here um, in Tennessee. 
freshen up spot five spots we did we did a bunch of it off camera just because it's repetitive just freshen up batteries and uh freshen up mineral sites and stuff like that so i feel like we've got a good game plan there's a bunch of deer that made it from last year in tennessee that hopefully will show up this year we'll be excited about uh, but for right now we got about a six hour drive ahead of us going to do a little bit of door knocking tomorrow possibly in kentucky but mostly headed to ohio right now and we will pick up on the details of what deer we're chasing tomorrow We're back at my buddy Kyle's house. I'm sure y'all recognize this place. So guys, appreciate you letting us crash again. Oh, you're welcome. Except I'm not too excited about what you're making me do right now. Well, you're wondering why I'm in, already in a sweatshirt and it's like 80 degrees out. Apparently it could be the secret to successful door knocking for the day. We're gonna do an ice plunge for the first time. So. I think you gonna like it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Might take his breath away for a minute or two. <laughs> oh! Oh. No, stay there too long. Hit your button and go down. Just go? Go. Just hit the button and go down. You're going to talk yourself out of it. There you go. <laughs> Slide. There you go. Slide back? Yeah. And just like go down slow to your next level. Yeah, the breathing things. This shit was so sweaty. Yeah. Dude, I got thin blood. I'm from Georgia. Oh, you are. That's right. You're close. You got thin blood. Yes. Three minutes. <laughs> oh! The timer didn't even go off. I know my boys are in my stomach right yeah. now. <laughs> All right, let's get into door knocking. <laughs> hey, if today plunge. goes well, I'm sold on the plunge. All right. If it goes terrible, I'm going jacuzzi route. All right, so we just left Kyle's. Um, I'm going to start door knocking here. I have spent months, weeks and months up in these areas door knocking, so I've got a lot of the groundwork kind of broken for me. Um, but we're trying to get some new stuff today. And also, wanted to update you guys on a buck that showed up at the cornfield uh, that we put a camera at yesterday, showed up yesterday evening. Got a phone number to call. Yeah, it's just phone calls after phone calls after phone calls and nobody wants to call you back. In a few words, please tell me why you are calling. I want to deer hunt your property. I am sorry, could you repeat that again? I would really love to deer hunt your property. One moment please, while I transfer you to an agent. Okay, and what's your last name? Ellis, Lee Ellis. Okay, awesome. I will pass this along to the right person and okay. have someone give you a call back. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. All right, thank All you. Right. Bye. She didn't shut it down by any means. Like she seemed kind of open to it, so. I guess we will wait to see if we get a call back. I'm gonna go uh, to some of the places where we already have permission from prior trips and uh, get some stuff freshened up. I'm having some good flashbacks here. The last time I was here was when we had the upside down buck in the back of the truck. Um, I'm here giving this guy some more deer meat. I already gave him some from that deer, uh, but I'm kind of back in town and I just wanna make sure that I'm being a good dude and uh, getting him some more deer meat and uh, hopefully he lets us keep hunting here. So, do a little drop off. Man, that was freaking great. He's like, so you coming back this year? I was like, yeah, if you'd ha still have me, I'd love to. He's like, we'd love to have you back. And dude, there's a huge buck down here. Well, I'm going to grab the spotter, and I want to try and get eyes on it. Dude, it's a big deer. 
He's really far behind on his growth. Like he's only like just got his G2 sprouting, but he's like that wide. I ran a camera here all last year. I've never seen that deer before. We just pulled up to a spot or an area that uh, a buddy of mine, he was actually in town on a work trip. I don't know, we're probably an hour from where we were just door knocking. <clears throat> this is more rural farm country. But this would be huge if we can get this, yes. Super nice. Uh, but she was like, no, we get, she's like, we get asked to get that. How's that for a shot? Buck and a airplane in the background. I think he's eight. I think he's a six by five at least. Big tall brow tines on him. He's not done growing. We're making some headway, getting some new spots, finding some deer, doing the dang thing. That's a 45 Colt. Jeez. And a 410 shell. We're, uh, we're at a spot that is in a rough part of town, and uh, this is like the first spot we got yesterday. I'm not gonna lie, man, this sketches me out so much. I feel like we're gonna walk up on like a dead body or something. We can stick that on the top of the truck. <laughs> Knock on someone, hey, did you order a pizza? No? Uh, well, do you mind if we hunt here while we got your attention? Right here is where the property ends. I don't think it's huntable. And to be honest with you, I'd be kind of terrified to hunt here anyways. <laughs> I almost forgot, I almost forgot. All right, all right. Look at that, dude, it's magnet. It. That sucker's staying up there. <laughs> I forgot I had the pizza thing up there. <laughs> I swear to you, guys. Are you a pizza driver? <laughs> I was like, no, man. I just found that and put it up there because I thought it was funny. <laughs> the uh, guy I need to talk to is not here, but she made the mistake of saying his name. So now we're going to find look him up and call him. This place looks money. Body home. That was a classic case of uh, me basically saying, hey, have you seen this deer? You know what sucks is when you get demoralized, so you just kind of want to leave an area. Always in the back of my mind, I'm sitting there wondering, what if that gigantic deer is right there? I'm getting mentally drained up. Mr. Ed, hi, how are you? I know we're just two strangers, but how's the weather treating you? Mr. Ed, hi, hello. I know you don't know me and I don't know you, but let's sit down for some, Mr. Ed, hi. My Mr. Ed, hey, my name. <sighs> the train's coming off the tracks. That's what's happening right now. Sometimes I express my thoughts on paper. Sometimes in the song of lyrical majesty. And so I've labeled this song, I Believe I Could Cry, based on the song, I Believe I Could Fly. It goes a little something like this. I believe I could cry. Sometimes it makes me wonder why I knock on doors all night and day All they say is go away I believe I could cry That's all I got right now
pretty good. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I need to. I'm losing my mind. I need a yes. Honda Element, boys and girls. It's even the right color. I feel like we might be back in this thing. That was a sign. The heavens have opened the, the door knocking. We're back. We're back. Here we go again. Those, those were all bucks. Yeah, here we go again. Freaking traffic stop. We saw a bachelor group of bucks in the field. I literally just told you. I was like, dude, that's a place that could hold them. First field we drove back. Boom, whole bachelor group. Some of them look big too. So we're basically pulled over right on the side of the highway. To be honest, it's a little sketchy to walk this guardrail, but I think we'll be all right. Some nice bucks, but they're not they're not what we're looking for. I also, guys, I would not advise doing this on the side of a busy highway, but we were able to tuck in right on the back side of this guardrail. We're all right, but I don't want to be here too long. Let's go ahead and get back in the truck. Okay, all very right. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say we're rolling, but we're headed the right direction. Just got another spot. That was, I've probably got 10 different people that I'm waiting on phone calls back from. That was like one of the 10 and that went well. So we might have something to do in the morning before we head out of town. Go put another camera out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bucks in that bachelor group and two of them are big dude he's got junk on his brow tines see him he's got split brows so we're pulled over on the side of the road uh, glassing these deer and the homeowners over here or landowner rather. So I'm gonna talk to him and just kinda strike up a conversation. See where it goes. Uh, just, just trying to have some fun. I appreciate that. Have a good evening. You too. Well, we were headed up to um, the 80 acre bean field that we just got off the phone and got permission at and clearly got distracted. I went and spoke to that guy. He's super nice. Um, said his son hunts there. So no dice for us, but it's cool to film them anyways. I'm almost positive, like that bottom left right there. And I see, I see brow tines that look like they're like that long. Yeah, 100%. See, he just moved his head. Okay. We might have found us a big one. And finally on the place we had permission. <laughs> You saw crazy train coming off the tracks, Lee, earlier. Now you're now you're seeing happy Lee. Oh, that's exciting. I mean, that's that's the thing with the style of hunting we do with the door knocking. In. It's just like sometimes it is grueling, but just it can just like that it can change. Phone call you've been waiting on day on on all day or last few days, just like that. Boom comes in, and your whole day changes. thing you see that deer I did. did you see that freaking thing dude he just had a like club coming off of his head that thing was wild looking all right we're back at the farm uh, that we left off last night we're sticking a camera out in this corner where we saw that bachelor group of bucks and then we are headed back home.
Spartan Forge, who we work with, Bill Thompson, is a former vet. He created the app. If it were not for that app and keeping track of the properties, um, using that mapping tool is huge for us, especially on scouting trips. We've got a discount code link below if you guys want to try it out. Give it a try. There is a huge, huge update coming that is revamping the entire app, and it's got features that have not hit the hunting industry yet, so it's going to be really cool. Some kind of good stuff there. If you guys want to learn how we've door knocked um, our pitches, kind of how we approach talking to landowners, uh, we'll link the masterclass also below. Y'all check it out. We're doing live sessions every month where you guys can ask us questions on a Zoom call and we're answering y'all's questions. We just reduced the price of the masterclass uh, for those of you that got guys that are interested in how we do this and want to sign up for it. Getting into the portion of this video that I really, really wanted to address because I genuinely want y'all's feedback and help with this. I don't get to the point where I lose my head and make stupid decisions based on a big deer. So I want to present this situation to you guys. Uh, genuinely take in y'all's advice as I make my decision on should I hunt this deer, should I not. I try to avoid drama whenever possible. Let me lay out this situation for you guys because I also want to do the best I possibly can for hunters and represent hunters in the right light. So I just want to make sure that if I chose to hunt this deer, uh, that it wouldn't be more damaging for our brand, but also for just hunters in general. So here's the situation. There is a buck that two years ago was probably pushing 200 inches as a typical 10 pointer. and flirting with the world record typical archery buck. I mean, it's it's that class of an animal. He got shot by another hunter, was injured last year, went downhill and was probably a 170 plus inch deer, still big. Um, I now have two years of trail camera history with this deer. And the issue that I'm having is that this deer on the spectrum of urban is on the very far end of the spectrum. This deer is literally living in people's yards. There's pictures of him almost outside of people's windows. Um, and I think what this deer is doing is he is living in a zone, a certain city that does not allow hunting, period. He is untouchable in this zone. I have permission on the edge of this zone. And this deer in the last two years of trail camera history with him is killable maybe two or three times a year. So he spends 97% of his life in this city that is unhuntable, and he maybe ventures out during the rut or late season two to three times uh, from what my cameras have told me. This is a non-bait state. You can't bait, can't put any attractant, no minerals, nothing. Um, and this deer is untouchable for 97% of his life. But while he is in that untouchable zone, he is literally living in people's yards. When he goes in out of the zone, he is purposely avoiding large blocks of woods. And I think the reason that he's doing that is because he was shot by a hunter two seasons ago. So I think this deer in his mind is like, I've never been messed with in people's yards. People are feeding me. This is where I'm gonna chill. This is where I'm gonna live. My perspective is that this place is like 16 hours one way from my house in Atlanta. I've driven up there six different trips, getting spots, sometimes driving the the 16 really 32 hour round trip just to change trail camera batteries and come back down so i have spent a ton of time and effort to locate this deer to even have a chance at this deer and i'm at a standstill or just a, a crossroads of do i hunt the deer is it right for hunting would it be a good image there's going to be pictures that come out of this deer of him you know in yards and I just don't want the, the image to be, if I was, in my mind, it's an extreme long shot to even have a chance at this deer. But if in the chance that I did, and I, there's a picture that comes out of me with this deer, and then there's a picture that comes out of him in this city where he can't be hunted, and it's, it's just not a good look, if you guys get what I'm saying. So I'm kind of leaving it up to you guys um, and what y'all think. I mean, there are people that are actively hunting this deer. Again, he was shot two seasons ago. I know a lot of people that hunt in this area. He is being pursued and hunted. Because we film, it's a little different. There's more responsibility than us to make sure we're painting hunting in the right light. And I'm genuinely just can't make up my mind of saying walk away, even though this is a world, world, world-class deer. It could possibly be one of the biggest typicals that I will ever get the chance to hunt in my life. Um, 
I just don't want to, I just want to do what's right. So I'm kind of at a crossroads. I'm looking for y'all's help. Uh, take it to the comments, leave us some comments, leave us feedback. Um, yes or no, give us your thoughts. And I might pin a comment of yes and might pin a comment of no. Whichever one has the most likes will probably help sort of voice y'all's opinions on whether or not to pursue this particular deer. Uh, if if y'all take it to the comments and I end up hunting this deer and get canceled, at least I still maybe have a shot in the pizza industry delivering pizzas. So we'll catch you guys on the next episode.